Good afternoon. My name is Lisa DiCarbo. I will be your cantor for today's Mass. Today's Mass is being offered for Luke and Julia Lutton. Today we celebrate our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the Universe. Our celebrant for today's Mass is Father Aaron. And we have a few announcements. At this Mass, there will be a second collection for the retirement of the religious. Aids and substitutes are still needed for our elementary faith formation program. Please help us as we communicate our faith to our children. Volunteers will be distributing angels before and after all Masses this weekend and next weekend if there are any left. Please see the bulletin for further details. Please note that the parish office will be closed on Thursday and Friday of this week in observance of Thanksgiving. Now let us stand and pray together the St. Michael prayer found in the back of your hymnal. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Now will you please sing our opening hymn, number 573, to Jesus Christ, our Sovereign King. Praise the Lord, my brothers and sisters in Christ, as we welcome all here today for Mass, those who are uh, from the uh, Newcastle area, from visitors perhaps, um, as we celebrate the Feast of, uh, of Christ our King. 
Um, my name is Father Aaron Chris. I may have met some of you, uh, maybe uh, haven't, uh, but uh, I'm the senior parochial vicar here, just about three weeks, so talk to you a little bit more about that later on, but let's get to the important things of uh, beginning Mass and celebrating the Lord, the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and the peace of God our Father, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. As we gather here today as a faith family, we want to thank the Lord for God's love for us, for the gift of life, for our, our uh, blessings in life, for Christ being our King, and before we listen to God's word today to be inspired, and before we receive Jesus as our King in the Holy Eucharist and the body of blood of Christ, may we humbly call to mind whatever our sins are, our struggles are, our weaknesses, perhaps we haven't always made Christ truly our King in our lives, seeking God's mercy, pardon, and strength. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you plead for us at the right hand of our Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Dear ever living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant we pray that the whole creation, set free from slavery, may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in you to the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
A reading from the second book of Samuel. In those days, all the tribes of Israel came to David and Hebron and said, Here we are, your bone and your flesh. In days past, when Saul was our king, it was you who led the Israelites out and brought them back. And the Lord said to you, You shall shepherd my people Israel, and shall be the commander of Israel. When all the elders of Israel came to David in Hebron, King David made an agreement with them there before the Lord, and they anointed him king of Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, let us give thanks to the Father who has made you fit to share in the inheritance of the Holy Ones in light. He delivered us from the power of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for in him were created all things in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he himself might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile all things for him, making peace by the blood of his cross through him, whether those on earth or those in heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The rulers sneered at Jesus and they said, Well, he saved others. Let him save himself. If he is the chosen one, the Christ of God. Even the soldiers jeered at him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Above him, there was an inscription that read, This is the king of the Jews. Now, one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other rebuking him said in reply, Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed, we have been condemned justly for the sentence we received corresponds to our crimes, but this man's done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And so Jesus replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, it's wonderful to be here to celebrate the Lord with you today. As I come to this Mass at 4 o'clock, this kind of concludes, except for tomorrow at St. Camillus, the uh, rotation of being on the weekend Masses. So some of what I say will be repeat for those who've been at other Masses, including weekday, but just a little bit of ba background about um, myself before we get into the homily. But again, by way of introduction, my name is uh, Father Aaron Chris. Uh, Aaron, you could call me Father Aaron because I'm just getting this understanding that if, I, if you call me Father Chris, people will think that's my first name. And many people over the years of being a priest have, can still think Chris is my first name. So just call me Father Aaron, uh, and then that'll be fine. Now, I am 58 years of age, whether we consider that young or old, whatever, I leave it up to you. Uh, I uh, am originally from the south side of Pittsburgh. Of course, when you're from the south side of Pittsburgh, a true south side, I would say it south side. Okay, otherwise, you're not really from Southside. Um, I know we have the South Side of Newcastle here, but, uh, but again, uh, growing up there, uh, my parents are both deceased, uh, Edmund and Florence, but I, to my understanding, come from a Polish background. My uh, father, Edmund, his original name was Kryszkiewicz, okay? Now, if you can spell that name, see me after Mass, okay? So far, nobody's been able to spell it. Now, my mother, Florence, God rest her soul as well, her original name was Brozowska. Brozowska, it got changed to Broski. But again, if anybody could spell that name, please see me after Mass. Now, there were four in the family, my brother, Father David, uh, but he only lived till 51 years of age. He died of a heart attack uh, about 18 years ago. He was celebrated his 25th anniversary as a priest, but uh, God took him after that. So still shocking to us, but it happens. 
Uh, I have a sister, Ellen, who goes by Ellie, and she's married to John, and they live in Tacoma, Washington, who I just visited uh, back in late August, early September. I have a brother, Mark, who lives in the North Hills. I'm the baby of the family, if you will. I've been ordained a priest for uh, 31 years plus. I uh, attended Catholic high school, uh, really Catholic school all my life, except when I went to Pitt University. And then as the calling kind of happened in the priest, I honestly believe was probably what I was about seventh or eighth grade, somewhere around there. Uh, after college, I pursued that. Uh, and I eventually went through St. Paul's Seminary uh, for a year studying at Duquesne University, and then went on to St. Vincent Seminary in Latrobe uh, for, uh, for the four years there. I was ordained a priest in 1991, May 18th, uh, and I've had several different assignments as a parochial vicar in a few parishes. Then I became pastor of a few parishes uh, one uh, for 12 years, the other for a year, and then uh, I was in the Upper Allegheny Valley for 24 years. That's where I came from. That is in the like Natrona Heights, Terenum, Creighton, Natrona, Springdale, that type of area. So to be honest with everybody, it's hard to leave a place after you've been in an area for 24 years. But be coming here, uh, your name is Holy Spirit. I've always had a great devotion to the Holy Spirit since I was in seminary, and I still do. Praying novenas to the Holy Spirit. What does God, what does God's Spirit want me to do? Where I should be? But you've been very welcoming to me, and, and I'm very happy for that. And I'm glad to see so many people here at Mass. Uh, imagine if we could just bring one more person between now and Christmas. Bring them with you. Just work on one person. One person, it could be a family member, it could be a friend, it could be a neighbor, somebody that's not been with the church. Just think of one person, pray about it. But the other thing I'd like to say is that in addition to being a priest, I have different interests. I like sports, uh, baseball, hockey, a little bit of football. I'm not as fast as I used to be, uh, but I can still hit. And playing street hockey, I can still shoot. Uh, I just can't run as fast as I could when I was younger. I also like music, different types of music. I don't really care for country music, to be honest with everybody, but if it's country rock, I'll take it. Uh, that's good stuff. Uh, but again, there's other things, but it's good to be here to celebrate with you. And uh, let's go on to the homily then. Uh, this past summer in my last parish, which uh, is called Guardian Angels in the Upper Allegheny Valley of the Diocese of Pittsburgh uh, during VBS, okay, uh, Vacation Bible School. One of the youth asked me, if I had a boss, do you have a boss? And I replied, well, yes. Okay, well, Bishop Zubik is the head of the bishop, uh, is the head bishop of the Diocese of Pittsburgh, and uh, he is the one who assigns us as priests to parishes where we're to serve. As a side note, of course, Bishop Zubik is the one who assigned me here at Holy Spirit. And so what I proceeded to say to the youth was that, that yes, Bishop Zubik is my boss. But on the other hand, you know, the Pope is Bishop Zubik's boss. And I think you know where I'm going with this. And Pope Francis's boss is none other than God. So we answer to God, all of us. He's the ultimate boss of us all. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, as we gather here today on this 34th Sunday, we could say of ordinary time, but more famously known as the Feast of Christ the King, which is a transition from ordinary time to Advent, which will begin the following weekend, you know, we observe this feast as adoration of Christ, if you will, who is our ultimate boss, who's meant to be our ultimate boss, uh, our King, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, ruler of all rulers. So when we take a look at the readings for today uh, at the Mass, they all seem to line up 
which ought they should, with the reflection of God as King, King of Kings. Now, when we think of kings, we think of rulers with some kind of a great power, authority, and uh, might. Now, let's take a look at the readings. The first reading from the second book of Samuel, uh, we have reference to Jesus Christ, who as king, actually came from a line of kings or a descent of kings. And so that's why we have the reference to, to Saul, King Saul, and then of course, King David. Now in the responsorial Psalm, uh, reference is made to the house of David, of King David, who of course was a precursor of Jesus Christ as King. And then we are to rejoice in the house of the Lord our King. Now we take a look at the second reading from a letter to the Colossians. It indicates to us how God the Father, through his Son, rescued us from the power of darkness and brought us to the kingdom of his beloved son Jesus. Also, this passage points to the primacy of God as ruler, again, as sovereign over all kings, over all, all authority. Then in the gospel, according to Luke, uh, we hear of Jesus as being called king, king of the Jews, and how the good thief on the cross near our crucified Lord Jesus, he pleads with him, he says, please remember me and receive me into your kingdom. And so Jesus, our Lord and our King, responds to him, today you will be with me in paradise. So, our brothers and sisters in Christ, when we reflect uh, on this kingship of Jesus, then we, we want to be able to see that a king, a true king, would look out what is best for his people, not being caught up in the power of the position, but a true king is caught up in taking care of his people uh, and looking out what's best for them. And so when we think about it, as we celebrate this feast of Christ the King, doesn't, isn't that what Jesus does for us? Jesus Christ, indeed, for our salvation, to free us from our sins, so that we can live in his grace now, and then ultimately to be with God in heaven, what does he do for us? He suffers and dies on the cross for our sins. Now there's no other king in history, in the history, no matter how great we could study the history of kings, that would actually willingly suffer and die to be humiliated on a cross for our salvation. There's nobody that comes, will ever come close to Jesus Christ as our King. And so we need to ask ourselves then for the love that this King shows us. Do we let Christ really be our King? To really be our boss, if you will, to rule our lives? to help us in making decisions? Or is it possible, is it real, that we allow other things to come in the way, other things to rule us, such as money, about material possessions, about being popular, about our jobs, our careers, even other people? Do we listen to what Christ our King teaches us? Do we put God first in our lives by our prayer to God each day, our worship and our participation in Sunday Mass and Holy Days, our defense of our Lord and of our faith in the, faith, in the face of those who oppose our practice of the Catholic faith and what the Catholic Church stands for? Do we strive to honor the name of our God and promote the dignity of God's holy name? Do we make decisions based on the morality of God's teachings? Do we ask the Holy Spirit to guide us in the love for our faith and our Catholic practice and to help promote our Catholic faith? If so, I believe then we can say that Christ is truly our King. If not, then 
it seems that we are letting other things, other people, boss us around. And yet we all know that we ought not to let this happen. And why? Really, when you think about it, only our Lord, our gracious God, loves us so much. He gives us the breath of life and all of our blessings. Only God can forgive us of our sins. And only God is to be our ultimate judge as we live our lives and when we come to the end of our lives. So we really ought to make Christ our King. Now, if we truly make Christ our King, what will we do? We will build and we will continue to build his kingdom. Remember, the good thief says, remember when we come into your kingdom. So yes, there is the kingdom, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. How do we do that? We're trying to build the kingdom of God each day of our lives on earth. If, we, if Christ is really our king, like Jesus Christ, we will show compassion for those who are poor, for those who are hungry, for those who are homeless, people who are needy in some way, who are sick, they're imprisoned, they're orphaned, they're lonely, those who are disabled in mind, body, or spirit. If Christ is truly our King, we will, like Christ Jesus, make sacrifices with our time and our talent and our treasure to benefit others in need. And like Jesus Christ, we will build his kingdom by uplifting others and their spirits trying to bring forth the best in others and ourselves instead of trying to put people down and criticizing and tearing people apart and being judgmental. So in conclusion, if Christ is our King and we are like Christ, we will be able to govern our lives and even other people's lives because we're really looking out for their well-being. and. We will try to help us and others to move in the right direction to Christ. So each day, may we more and more bring Christ our praise, our honor, and our glory, and put God first, and let Christ really be so much part of our thoughts, words, and our deeds, and yes, our songs of praise. Yes, indeed, God is our ultimate boss. He is the Lord of Lords, he's the King of Kings, um, we owe God our respect, our love, and our allegiance. So may we be able to always adore the Lord and put Christ our King first so that God blesses us now and ultimately in his heavenly kingdom. May God be with us. May God bless us all. Let's now make our profession of faith in our God. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial of the Father, through him all things are made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and he rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Father in heaven, we now come to you as we offer our prayers for the needs of your people. Please respond. 
Lord, hear our prayer. That the church will always be a place where the truth, mercy, love, and wisdom of Christ the King will shine. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our world leaders, that they will see their power as a, sh a shining, a sharing, and the authority of God, and reflect it in the way they govern. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those caught in addictions, that Christ the King will liberate them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the victims of persecution and oppression, that the justice of Christ the King will rid the world of every trace of hatred. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered in this holy place, may God deem us worthy of eternal life at the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As we pause this week to celebrate the Thanksgiving Day holiday, may we remember to give thanks to God for his many blessings upon us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the beloved dead, especially for Luke and Julia Lutton, may their souls soon rejoice with the angels in the heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now pause to add our own intentions in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now pray together our prayer's prayer. Lord Jesus, Jesus you, you told us where your treasure is, there your heart is also. The parish of Holy Spirit treasures our faith in you, our children, and every person who gathers here. Help us to have the courage to sacrifice, to love, and to build in your name. Guide us by your spirit of wisdom, give success to the work of our hands, and keep us in your peace. Saints, martyrs, and Mary, our mother, pray for us. As we continue, would you please sing with me number 568 in your hymnal, Rejoice, the Lord is King.
type of like you are. Let us pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God the Father, the Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the grace and glory of his name, for our good and for all of holy church. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, for you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness as eternal priest and King of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption and making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love and peace. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things, you make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun and to its setting, a pure sacrifice will be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and he broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, eat of it. This is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you. 
and for many for forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection, ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. And grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May you make of us an eternal offering to you, so we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of our God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, the glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, the entire people you gain for your own. And listen graciously to the prayers of this, your family, whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children who are scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters and those who are pleasing you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. For there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we we'll be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you did say to your apostles, peace I leave you, by peace I give unto you. Look not on our sins, but rather on the faith of your church graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, live and reign forever and ever. And may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be always with you. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of Christ's peace.
Receiver and body, blood, Lord Jesus, but not be with judgment and condemnation, but through your love and mercy, be protection in my body, the healing, the remedy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am worthy of each and each one of you, but only say the word in my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn this afternoon is number 935 in your hymnal, Draw Near. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorifying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, who may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. It's great to see you all here today. Looking forward to getting to know you and, and you, me. Uh, let's continue to build up God's kingdom each day by even little acts of kindness and charity to one another. Uh, the Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless all of you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is now ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. We have a great rest of the weekend, a great week ahead, and in advance, a blessed Thanksgiving to you. Thank you, Lord. Please join in singing our recessional hymn, number 574, Crown Him with Many Crowns, number 574.